PI2 EQX 44001 and O2 PCI Express Redriver, Pericom. Welcome to this training module on Pericom's PI2 EQX 4401 and O2 PCI Express Redrivers. This training module introduces the signal conditioning devices, which are called redrivers for Generation 1 and Generation 2 PCI Express. The PCI Express bus can be thought of as a high-speed serial replacement of the older parallel PCI and PCI X buses. In terms of bus protocol, PCI Express communication is encapsulated in packets. The work of packetizing and depacketizing data and status message traffic is handled by the transaction layer of the PCI Express port. PCI Express devices communicate via a logical connection called a link. A link is a point-to-point -point communication channel between two PCI Express ports. At the physical level, a link is composed of one or more lanes. Conceptually, the lane is a full duplex byte stream, transporting packets containing the data in 8-bit byte format. Lane counts are written with an X prefix, and X16 is the largest size in common use. High-speed differential signal interfaces dominate today's high-performance system architectures because of their ultra-high data rate throughput, low power consumption, facilitation of PCB layout, and PCB cost reduction. The challenge is that at the bandwidths of 2.5 gigabits per second to 3.2 gigabits per second, the differential signals are tremendously attenuated and distorted when traveling through a long trace or cable. Differential approaches to extend the trace or cable include using a PCI Express bridge or a packet switch, or by using the PI2 EQX redriver family. However, a PCI Express bridge or a PCI Express packet switch will cost more than using the PI2 PI2 EQX family, and the extended functions in the PCI Express bridge or packet switch may not be fully used if the application is only for trace and cable extension. The PI2 EQX44 family was developed using Paracom's cutting-edge technology to boost the high-speed differential signals traveling in traces or cables in high-performance system interface protocols, PCI Express, Fiber Channel, Rapid I.O. at 2.5 gigabits per second. The, PIT, the PI2 EQX44 family has flexible and programmable settings for its equalization, de-emphasis, and switch to fit various lengths of trace and cable. The integrated equalization circuitry provides flexibility with signal integrity of the PCI Express signal before the redriver, whereas the integrated de-emphasis circuitry provides flexibility with signal integrity of the PCI Express signal after the redriver. Here shows the internal block diagram of the PI2 EQX44 family redriver. A low-level input signal detection and output squelch function is provided for all channels. Each channel operates fully independently. When a channel is enabled and operating, that channel input signal level determines whether the output is enabled. If the input level of the channel falls below the active threshold, then the output driver switches off and the pin is pulled to VDD via a high impedance resistor. In addition to providing signal reconditioning, the PI2 EQX44 redrivers also provide power management standby mode operated by an enable pin. A differential clock buffer is provided for test and other system requirements. This clock function is not used by the data channels. 
Figure 1 is the configuration of the PI2 EQX4401 and 02 test board which has a variety of trace lengths from 1.9 inches to 40 inches at input and output for the signal integrity test. The Agilent N4902B acts as a signal source to provide high speed differential signal. Figure 2 and Figure 3 are the result of 35 inches input trace and 1.9 inch output trace tested on the test board. Figure 2 shows the messy input eyes measured at TP1 and TP2. However, the signals are recovered at the output of the PI2 EQX4401 and 02 because of the 7.5 dB equalization in the input of the PI2 EQX4401 and 02. Here is an example for using the PI2 EQX4401 for signal reconditioning in the notebook and docking station. The PIC Express signal at the PCI Express X1 connector in the docking station will become weak and fail the compliance test after the signal traveling through a long trace between U1 and the PCI Express X1 connector. The PI2 EQX4401 in the docking station reconditions the signal from U1 to meet the PCI Express compliance test on the PCI Express X1 connector. Here is an example for using the PI2 EQX4402 for the storage area network redundancy application. The two SAN recovery cards with four lanes PCI Express interface are 35 inches away from each other and the two PI2 EQX4402 chips U2 and U3 are deployed at the input of the PCI Express chipsets U1 and U4. Thus, the equalization in the input of the PI2 EQX4402 will correct the reconditioning of the messy deterministic jitters at the input of the PI2 EQX4402 and the output of the PI2 EQX4402 will become clear and pass the PCI Express compliance test. In this example, the systems A and B are using a high speed differential cable, 3 meter to 7 meter in length for PCI Express interface. The PI2 EQX4402 chips U2, U3, U6, and U7 will guarantee that the signals at the input of the U2 and U10 will pass the PCI Express compliance test. In this figure, the PCI Express X8 systems A and B are using a CAT5 or CAT6 cable, 2 meters to 5 meters depending on the quality of the cables, while guaranteeing passing the PCI Express compliance test at the input of U1 and U10. This combination of using a PI2 EQX4402 and a CAT5 cable will provide an optimized cost reduction solution for cable applications.